Hey, this is Professor Game, where we interview successful practitioners of games, gamification, and game thinking who bring us the best of their experiences to get ideas, insights, and inspiration that help us in the process of getting our students to learn what we teach. And I am Rob Alvarez. I'm the founder of Professor Game and professor of gamification and games-based solutions at IE Business School, EFMD, EBS University, and many other places around the world. And if this content is for you, then please go ahead and subscribe to our email list for free at professorgame.com slash subscribe. Hey, engagers, and welcome once more to the Professor Game Podcast. And we are with Sharice today. But Sharice, before we start formally, we need to know, are you prepared to engage? I am ready to engage. <laughs> Let's do this, Sharice, because we have Sharice Beach with, with us today, who is the founder and CEO of Youth Transformation Services YTS. It is a nonprofit company providing training on risk and protective factors mental health intervention, and game-based learning. She also authored At-Risk Students, Students Transforming Student Behavior, which details the warning signs of disturbing behaviors often overlooked by educators and or misdiagnosed by mental health professionals. And as a result, she has co-created the Mental Health Intervention app with her younger son. And MHI, which is the Mental Health Inter Intervention app, is a two-way communication tool that alerts healthcare providers of changes in their clients' mood, and behavior. To learn more, you can definitely visit more at youthts.org. So, Sharice, I know I asked you for a short introduction, but is there anything else that you would like to say before we, we start with the interview? No, I think I'm just a regular person hmm. with some extraordinary life experiences, and I feel using those and expounding upon them is the gift. This is the gift that if we can, share it with everyone else because we're not unique. There's somebody else out there with the same visions, the same questions, hmm. the same aspirations. And I think that that's what this is all about is sharing. Amazing. Amazing. So, Sharice, we like to get to know our guests a little bit more beyond the, you know, the formal words of an introduction. So, we always ask this question of, you know, what is a day in the life or... If we were in your shoes, what would life look like? We, we want to get to know you a bit more in the, you know, day-to-day -day kind of stuff. Well, my new normal, my new day-to-day -day after retiring from uh, a school administration position for almost 30 years, my day starts typically between 6.30 and 7 o'clock in the morning with uh, one and three-fourth cup of coffee as you probably can see, I'm a little OCD, so I can't do two cups. And a half a cup at the end is not enough. So one and three-fourth cup generally jumpstarts my day. And that day goes back to finishing up whatever I didn't get done the day before, responding to emails, dealing with Zoom calls regarding my own video game development, and just reaching out, trying to gather support or answer questions to anyone who's asking about the game development process. So it's a full day, but it's a very rewarding day. And it sounds amazing. So Sharice, it seems like you have things figured out. But as you know, as and the engagers probably by now might know as well, there are times when things just don't go our way. So and those are times where we take very, very valuable lessons. So we'd like to know about one of those lessons you took from one of those fails or first attempts in learning, however you want to call them. Perhaps we can call it your favorite fail. I don't know. But we want, this, we want basically to be there with you to listen to that story and have some takeaways as you would have as well. I don't think I could wrap my mind around the favorite fail because no failure is <laughs> <laughs> my favorite but one lesson I learned early on, and I think it was the premise of writing the book, and that is I tend to create products and services based on what I see as need. And I get very passionate about the gaps in especially education. Being in education, I, I literally live through the gaps and it's the things that education wasn't able to provide or the help that we couldn't offer families in need just based on limitations of the system. 
I looked for ways outside of that system that I could make a better change or I could affect some form of regularity. So what I learned from having that passion is creating services, products, or processes that I feel is so important, but it may not be what people actually want. And I look at social media today. I would create a product like my book, At-Risk Students, Transforming Student Behavior, because that's a personal thing. I raised an at-risk child and worked with challenging youth for most of my career. So the book was a combination of my experiences, the things that worked well, the things that you don't want to implement in order to affect change. So I was so passionate. I wrote the book and the book is still doing well, but it wasn't the kind of book that made people wake up in the middle of the night and say, oh, I got to go to the next (laughs) chapter. (laughs) And then I had friends that all bought the book. They gave me such warm accolades. And when I would ask questions about, hey, what did you think of chapter three? Now I'm talking about my colleagues, my educator friends. And they're like, oh, I couldn't get into that because you had charts and maps. And, you know, I don't want to see charts and maps when I'm not at work. Uh, So, no, I didn't read that chapter. And that was a good wake up call for me. So I believe for the future and anyone else out there in the creation process, make sure you couple that passion of what you want to convey with what the public actually want. And the prime example today is TikTok. TikTok has become a necessary staple if you are marketing, if you are trying to gain followers to get your message out. But you look at TikTok and you see mostly entertainment, even though there is platforms that share their businesses and share with their audiences their message of whatever that is. But for the most part, it's Funnies, it's obscure jokes, it's borderline inappropriateness, but it's a platform that <laughs> you can do that with. And if this is what the people want. So I may have 500 followers because mine is, is about video gaming. Some of it's a little funny. I've learned to make things a little funnier for those that need it, but then it's still like I can't dilute my message. I have to stick to, you know, I have to stick to my brand. And I've learned to be okay with that. But starting out, I recommend anyone try to look at what the public is looking at and what they want, and then kind of sneak your message in because that's how they'll get it. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. And and you've mentioned now that you're in the, into video gaming and all these things, and it's one of your main channels. Is there Is there a lesson that you could bring for us for actually the opposite story? One of those times where you did something and it actually did work out. We want to, we want to share that success, you know, especially again, if it has to do with video games or or games that have a purpose and, and help us achieve certain objectives. Can you talk to us about such a story? Yes. It's really the story that I'm in right now. And that is the video game that my grandson and I are developing. He's a gamer. He's an avid gamer. And I'm an education person who, like I said, lives in the gaps, know and understands the pitfall. So the game is, the storyline of the game is being developed through what I see a video game needs to be for kids. The game is developed for students, particularly grades three to eight, to learn social emotional learning skills and strategies and kind of improve the social skills deficit that social media, hiding behind a screen, just the way we live today. No negativity, but it is the reality. Kids three years old can navigate a smartphone and can play games and can locate apps and probably can shop as well as any adult because that's how our kids are wired. So when they start kindergarten or even preschool, Kids today, they don't know how to carry on a conversation. They may not be able to understand to wait their turn or let someone help you because they may know the answer rather than saying, no, I'll do it myself. So this is a pattern I had begun to see. So one of the things that I've taken away from that that I can say has been a positive thing 
is to turn the product into something that the intended person for it, which in this case are kids, would love to do, would be excited about. Very few kids don't want to engage in a video game. Very few kids enjoy hearing a teacher lecture about verbs and nouns or math equations or social studies back in 1895. Kids may not be that interested in that, but you combine all of those things in a video game that they're very excited about. And guess what? They're learning in spite of themselves. So that's the one story I can say that my passion led me (laughs) to kind of turn things around and make sure I'm offering a product that the intended audience is going to love. Well, well, mind you, Cherise, I completely agree with you. However, it's always important to remember that there are huge cemeteries of video games and games that never got the attention of anyone. So it not only has to be or I mean, not only it's not only about creating a game, it also has to be good and has to be liked by your audience. So as you very well have right. stated, it's it's about considering where they're at, what are their needs, their interests, right? How can we get to that game or gamified situation where they're actually excited about learning whatever lessons you want to help them learn? So thank you for that story. And you're absolutely spot on, Rob, because... I'm marketing this game, and this was because we kept changing. The game has been in development since 2019, and the focus and the features have changed because I have been evolving with the process. So although the game will be available for anyone who wants the game in the Apple or Google Play stores, but it's being marketed to school districts to support social-emotional learning. That, once again, comes from my background. Social-emotional learning is a big buzzword in every community, in every nation. It's a real thing. And schools are teaching it or supporting it in some fashion, but it's not producing the desired results because it's still being taught as a curriculum-based lesson. So my last couple of years before retirement, I was going to work every day eagerly to do my job as always, but to look for those pieces that I knew I could use and improve on and make the video game even more viable. So the first thing was marketed towards schools, marketed to school districts, to the leaders that make the decision. So a a kid may be in the mindset of, I want to play Fortnite. You know, I want to play GTA. I don't want to sit up and play the jump anywhere in the world video game. But when you're doing it in school in connection with your social emotional learning lesson, the fun is I'm not reading a book that Hmm. I'm not trying to read. I'm actually playing a game. And then the goal is to learn the lessons while you're playing the game. So I feel that us switching the marketing strategy to schools is going to help the game to garner more excitement and just word of mouth over the fact that schools, I believe there's going to be a big improvement in scores, attendance, motivation in students, and the lessons that the game rewards them for, which is the social emotional learning strategies. So I'm very excited about this and I can't wait for this to happen. Amazing. Thank you very much for that. And and Sharice, I think this question is especially relevant in the moment you're at, which is during the development of such game that you've been mentioning. So do you follow some form of a process? Like what's a development, especially when you're creating the game, more than the, the tech part and the tech side, which is super complex and interesting as well. But what, um, from the conception, the idea, how, you know, what is going to happen in the game? How have you done it? Or, or how would you do it if you were to do it again? What would be the steps, perhaps, if, if there are any? Excellent question. And there definitely are steps. And in this case, it's kind of steps in a particular order. You have to be linear with this process. So the first thing in developing the game mindset is you have to develop the facts. What are the facts that lead you to feeling you have a solution to a problem? The facts are there's social skill deficits in our kids starting in age three due to living their life behind screens. 
The other fact is that parents are not magicians. Parents are human beings with their own needs and sacrifice most of those needs to help raise their children. Now, of course, we know that there are the stories of the parent that failed their kid, the parent that had some missteps in life, whether it's addiction or just bad choices that led to some level of separation from their kids. I see those as the exceptions. I don't see them as the rule. I've been in education, as I stated, 30 years before retirement, and most of the families I dealt with were loving, proactively helping their kids and doing the best that they can with what they had. And sometimes they still fell a little short. So those are the facts. I started with the reality of this is what's happening in in our society today. Parents are definitely working hard to do their very best, but sometimes they could use a little extra help. So the second part of the step after you develop the facts in game terminology, it's time to level up. You want to take those facts and you want to take them somewhere. You want to take them to the next level. So you know what the problem is. What do you do? Where do you go with that? What can you do? And in my case, I thought technology was the next step for me knowing the facts that I know. Let's get technology involved and let technology guide the next steps or we can solve some of these issues. And after that, because I got my facts, I've leveled up, but oh my gosh, I'm running into some problems. I've got some hurdles here. One of the big hurdles is money to how to finance your wonderful idea. So trying to gain investors, that's a big hurdle, but it's a necessary one. And it's truly an ongoing process. But after you've managed that, and of course spent your entire life savings, but that's for my therapist at another time, (laughs) the next thing would be winning. You did all that because you want to win. You want your kids to win. You want all students to win. You want their parents to win. You want the teachers that serve them to win. So it's all about taking the necessary steps so everybody comes out a winner. That sounds absolutely fantastic. Thank you for sharing your thoughts on that, Sharice. And Sharice, talking about this, you know, you've talked about your process, your ups, your downs. Is there any you know, any sort of, that, that's sort of the quick advice. I don't want to call it a silver bullet because it's definitely not what we're looking for, but is there a best practice, something that you would say, well, when you're thinking about these things, you know, do this and at least you'll get a little bit of a better result. I'm going to use one of the gaming strategies that's in our game that's in development. And that is the crossroad mindset. In each level of our game, there's crossroads because I think life is filled with crossroads. You always have, if you go to the right, I don't know what's what's down that road, but I'm going to take the right. And then you may find something that is really, really difficult, or you may get to a dead end. So if you get to a dead end, what do you do? You turn back around and then you go to the, you go to your left. If you get to go to the right and you get overtaken by the creatures or the weather or whatever, then you have to come up with all of what you are made of to fight that obstacle and still come out okay. So that's life. It's the crossroad mindset is what I say. It's one of the best game-based solutions we can use. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you very much for sharing that for sure. And Sharice, you've heard these questions. Now you, you have at least a feel of what the podcast is all about. How about you tell us if there is somebody that comes to your mind, somebody you say, well, after hearing these questions, I'd like this person answering these questions as well on Professor Game, sort of a future guest. I can't provide you with a name, but I can provide you with the profile. I would love for this podcast to have a guest who is a gaming journalist, a person who works for a magazine or a blogger whose job is to research all of the games, the games that have gained a lot of popularity or his or her personal favorites. But coming from that journalism 
I, that would be a wonderful guess that could say, well, these are the trends that I'm seeing. This is what works. This is what doesn't work. So it would help people like me to see if I'm on track or if I'm able to switch tracks to, again, appease what the public wants. That sounds pretty interesting. I'm not sure I had had that perspective before. Maybe we will look into a few profiles and see who fits our bill in that sense. So thank you for that. And, and yeah. when I saw this opportunity to answer that, I had some journalism people that I had researched and had reached out to several years back and with no response. So I don't want to say names because what I have learned, and that's an ever-changing field. A person can be on the top of their game in journalism or talking about gaming processes or whatever. And then you go back a year, or, you know, move forward. And then you go back a year or two to reach out to them again or to see where they are and they're gone. You don't, you know, they're doing something differently or they're just, they're out of the game. So it would be whoever is currently in that field of talking about gaming and processes of game developers, which I would just highly recommend because I think that what they have to offer from what they see is invaluable. Amazing. Thank you for that once again. So talking about recommendations, and I'm sure your book would be definitely one great one. So sitting right next to your book, what would be the book that you recommend the engagers to to read and to get inspired with? Oh my goodness. It's a book that I... I have so many tabs in it, and I frequently go back to it. And it's simply called Hooked. And it's the author is Nir Eyal. Very huh. odd name, but that is supposedly the pronunciation. It's N I R, uh, pronounced Nir. And last name is E Y A L, pronounced Eyal. And it's about how to build habit forming products. So a video game, if you if it's doing what it's supposed to do, it should be habit forming. And yeah. that's what being hooked on something is about. So, but this book, it details the gaming process of how to construct your games to make it habit forming, but it also is good for the development of any product. When you're developing a product or a service, what makes it a valuable product is that people keep going back to it. They keep using it. They continually refer it to other people as, hey, you need to try, read this book, or you need to read this article, or look at this documentary. It's right there with what you're doing. So it's something that spells, oh my God, I've got a habit to the person looking for it. So that's one of my favorite books is Hooked. And it's, uh, I can't, I can see what year it was published. It's not a new book, but it's very tethered in my bookshelf because it's frequently used. Definitely. And Nir was actually a past guest of the podcast. I believe it was episode 101 or something along those lines. It was a while ago, but he was, he is definitely a magnificent guest and definitely a great speaker, great author as well. His book Hooked is fantastic. And he has a a, a next book, which is almost about the opposite and it's called um, Indistractable. So, you know, Mm. we, we get distracted and hooked and this one is about being, becoming indistractable. So amazing book as well. I have it at home. Definitely recommend it for sure. The Hooked is, is probably better catered for, for people like, like us who are dedicating to you know creating games and engaging mm-hmm. stuff. But the other one is also pretty, pretty good. Well, you know, I'm a fan of yours now. And I will be <laughs> going back looking for that podcast because I do have all of your podcasts. I saved every last one. So I will be going back to look for his because that, that'll be almost like me meeting him in person just to hear him speak and hear his voice. So I'm excited about that. Thank you for sharing. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we've talked about the the great stuff that you have done, that the, the books of other people as well, recommendations you've given, but we would like to know about you. What would you say is your superpower? That thing that you do at least better than most other people? I pride myself in being a good storyteller. And that probably comes a lot from my profession, the part of teaching. But, you know, good teachers 
good educators are also learners. And the way youth tell stories was one of the things that I had to make sure I did not make that same mistake as I tell my stories. And that is starting in the middle or starting at the end and then going back to the beginning and then looping back. Because when you ask a young person, well, what happened? Like a situation that maybe there was an argument on the playground and you're trying to get through what started it and how you can help. And you say, what happened? They'll start with somewhere in the middle. And I'm mad because he did, okay, but how did it start? So just practicing with kids to teach them to start at the beginning, that just further emphasized that when I'm telling a story, when I'm talking about something, I start at the beginning and I go straight through to the middle and then at the end. And that's part of what I do with writing the script because I write the script for the video game. So I'm telling the story of the three main characters throughout So that's what I find to be the thing that I do best is I can tell a good story. That sounds absolutely amazing and very, very important as well. Storytelling is definitely a big factor in games, video games, gamification and whatnot. So Sharice, we come to a difficult question now. What would you say is your favorite game? Not difficult, but it's going to shock you, I believe. It's probably going to shock the (laughs) listeners based on all of what I've talked about me, but my very favorite video game is called The Silent Age. And when I tell people that, you know, because I have friends that say, well, since you're developing a game, what game are you developing it from? And I said, really, I'm not developing from any game that I can think of or that I hear about others talking about But as I was doing my research and looking at and playing different games, The Silent Age just took my number one spot. It's about a guy who's a janitor. It's a very simple game. And I love simplicity because my focus is not on theatrics and AI, which is very important. But in my game, well, my game is one of seven. It's a seven series game. So it starts off a little bit simple. And then as each game progresses, it's going to get a little bit more detailed and a little bit more effects will be added to it. You know, it'll be like my game currently is 2D. Moving forward, it'll be 3D. It'll be a lot of AI involved. So just seeing a very simple game, The Silent Age is One major character, he's a janitor, he has on a red jumpsuit, never changes clothes. So there's no switching out, there's there's no inventory of clothes to (laughs) to have him changing into. And then he's going to take over this alien situation on his job where there's nobody else there but him. And the story, it's the storytelling. The storytelling and the graphics behind it and the emotion of this character, you get inside of him. And it just became like a wow factor to me. I just loved every minute of it. So how did that game impact me to move forward? Keep it simple. Keep the graphics real sharp and real lifelike and try to deal with, add mystical pieces, but deal with it in a realistic fashion. Like my game has mystical animals and things that would not occur like icebergs that you can open with a lock, you know, stuff like that. So it's a game. It's not real. But the conception of why these things are happening are everyday life. So I would highly recommend if you want to check out The Silent Age, just to see why I'm so enthused with it. And then after you say, okay, she's a little crazy. This is the slowest moving game ever. (laughs) Hopefully you'll see some part of the game that has value. I mean, it it was a big seller. It sold, but you didn't, it's not like it's not Fortnite, but it was a huge seller and I just love it. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you very much for that favorite game that you gave us. It's definitely outside of what we we typically Mm -hmm. get on the podcast, but Sharice, as much as we've been enjoying this chat, and as the engagers know, you know, we're coming to the end of the podcast. If you have any quick final words of advice, this is the time. Also, let us know where we can find out more about you and your work. And then we'll say goodbye. 
Well, I want to do, I'll do a brief summary in terms of what is the best way or how to approach a problem in, in a game-based solution mindset. A problem is obviously the first thing that you look for. What is the problem? So let me just stick with my educational background. Problem. Some kids come to school and they're unmotivated to learn. What's next? It's a process. How do you motivate them? How do you get them excited and wanting to be at school and wanting to learn? And very simply, the third thing would be, what's the purpose? The purpose is to get them engaged and motivated to learn. So the problem is they're not interested. The process is what do you do to get them interested? In my case, it's the video game, the social emotional learning video game. And the purpose is re-engagement, motivation, great attendance, students deciding to behave appropriately because they've learned some strategies on how to behave appropriately. So I would say that that would be the biggest advice, and especially for anyone looking at game-based solution products or services, I think that that's a good approach problem process and purpose. Amazing. Thank you so much, Reese, for engaging on this interview. Is, is there anywhere you want to lead us on social media, on the web? Well, I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm all about keeping things simple. I think I've made that pretty clear. <laughs> so to contact me and to learn more about my day-to-day, -day, what I do, how evolved things are, I would say reach out to my non-for-profit website, which, as you stated before, is Youth Transformation Services, Youth, Y-O-U-T-H-T-S, Youth Transformation Services dot org is the website. That is very comprehensive. It'll talk about my journey. It'll talk about my oldest son, who um, he's the COO, I'm the CEO of this non-for-profit, and it'll talk about all of our products and services the reason behind why we do what we do. And being a non-for-profit, of course, we'll be begging for donations and investors because that's what non-for-profits do. So that's where I would lead all of <laughs> uh, you guys to. And just to, uh, uh, seriously, just to find out if you're interested in more, you'll find it there. You'll find social media handles there and in everything to do with the game. Amazing, amazing. And I have just confirmed, I wanted to make sure which was the right episode, not to mention the uh, another one. And it was an epic one. It was episode 100 with Nier Eyal. <laughs> so, oh, wow. I'm writing it down. There you go. There you Isn't go. Isn't that perfect episode 100 for him? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> thank amazing, you. Amazing, amazing. So thank you very much again, Cherise, for sharing your expertise, your knowledge, your understanding, your experience with us, the engagers. However, as you know, and as the engagers very well know as well, at least for now and for today, it is time to say that it's game over. Engagers, it is fantastic to have you around. And as you know, we love to do this podcast and to add value to your lives. And it could be an opportunity as well so that we can connect on other places like Twitter. On Twitter, you can let me know of questions or anything. Anything that you want to say is a, is a good way to find us there. You can find my Twitter account as Rob. Alvarez B or at Rob Alvarez B. I'm trying to share content on gamification and the podcast. Lately, I've been a lit, bit, a little bit less active, but if I see you gents and ladies around asking questions and doing stuff, maybe I will come back to that social media a bit more. And of course, you always know that I'll be on gamification and education. And of course, I have to say this, you know, I have to say it and you know how important it is for us before you go on to your next mission. For you to subscribe or follow that is absolutely for free on your favorite podcast app or if you don't have one and you want to help us out and download a podcast app and follow us there or subscribe us which is again is absolutely for free do it and perhaps you might get a hang of it and enjoy listening there to the next episode of professor game see you there